back to the Mindful Monk series. I'm Simon Sleeman, your host of the series, and I'm planning another 16 episodes in this series. I hope you've kept safe and well over the summer and managed to get some relaxation and peace. I'd like to begin with a prayer as we begin this series. It's from the Glenstow Book of Prayer, page 113. Almighty God, bless all who worship you. From the rising of the sun to its setting, from your goodness, enrich us by your love inspire us by your spirit guide us by your power protect us in your mercy receive us now and always amen i'm in my monastic cell and i've been very happy to be in this space during the last months. I have now got a YouTube channel, which I think I told you about, and it contains, it will contain in this series, topics on spirituality, such as hope, topics on nature, such as the oak, great oak and ferns, topics on psychology, from sleep to breathing, all things which I hope will enhance our living, as Mary Oliver says, of this one wild, wonderful life. That's my goal, that we would get usable wisdom to help us live richer and more full lives. The glory of God is people fully alive, and that's my hope. For this series. Now I began it in lockdown and the pandemic certainly hasn't gone away. Here we are six months later and it feels even more uncertain than it did when we were in lockdown. You know at least we knew what things were about in lockdown and it seems that the whole thing is far from over. And the loss for people has been enormous. People have died. Relatives have not been able to witness or be with, hold the hands of people who are dying. I, I just can't think of what that must be like for the person dying or for the person, the people who are grieving or mourning the loss. Enormous. People have lost jobs and livelihoods. At a lesser level, people have had cancelled holidays, not got the money back, cancelled weddings, cancelled graduations, lost a certain amount of freedom and spontaneity. And things we took for granted this time last year, like going back to school, eating out, having greeting someone with a handshake or a hug, they're no, no, no longer with us, no longer. Well, people are going back to school, which is great. But a lot of the, the things that, as I say, we took, the way we did them, to, we took for granted, have gone. So I think that we, it's it important not, not to underestimate the, the losses and the effect that these losses have even unconsciously on our system. It's hard, it's hard. And we are adjusting, but there is still a cost on our system, a cost on it, which we may not even be aware of. There's a background exhaustion and tiredness as our energy is drained. As we grieve these losses, grieving is an appropriate response at this time to the losses, it's normal. It's healthy, and I think we need to 
understand what's going on for in ourselves at the, and it's not unusual and that everybody is experiencing it. And in one sense, that's a wonderful thing because we recognize how interdependent we are, how interdependent we are. But deep loss, and we are experiencing deep loss, inevitably leads to sadness, a sadness which I think we need to keep in touch with. And sadness can give rise to anger, can give rise to anger at the situation and our vain attempts at controlling the world around, outside us. Because we feel a lack of control on the inside. So loss can give rise to sadness, which can give rise to anger, which can give rise to a need, an attempt to control the world outside us because of the chaos we're experiencing on the inside. This is perfectly normal and not exceptional, not exceptional. And as I say, most of us are experiencing this in some way. So I think it's a time when we need to have tremendous compassion for ourselves as we experience these and compassion for those around us who are like ourselves in our physiology and our psychology. They're feeling just as much grief as we are. It, it would be impossible not to feel that at the, at the moment. And there, we're experiencing that unpredictableness of life. And it's a share, an experience we're sharing in common and we're not on our own in it. So I think we need to be courageous in reaching out to others for help and support and not be afraid to ask for it because particularly I think men uh, find it more difficult to reach out for the help we need and we do need the support and compassion of others and I hope that we can find the generosity in ourselves to share compassion with others by being vulnerable and honest about what we're experiencing. And then I think that this can become a bonding and uplifting. So I hope this, as I say, finds you safe and well and that you can find some peace and tranquility in the midst of this storm you know, in the midst of the storm. And I might finish with the prayer from Basil of Caesarea, which is also in the book of prayer, Glenstock book of prayer. Steer the ship of my life, good Lord, to your quiet harbor, where I can be safe from the storms of sin and conflict. Show me the course I should take, Renew in me the gift of discernment so that I can always see the right direction in which I should go. And give me the strength and the courage to choose the right course, even when the sea is rough and the waves are high. Knowing that through enduring hardship and danger, we shall find comfort and peace. St. Basil of Caesarea. So God bless and keep safe and I'll see you next week.